Getting Started with Hurl and Jenkins. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller, version 2.426.1. Attached to this controller, I have an agent that has the Hurl binary installed on it. Now, what is Hurl? Hurl can be found at hurl.dev. And Hurl is a command line tool that runs HTTP requests defined in a simple plain text format. And that's the key part, plain text. We can see here from their example, we can just do a get with a URL, and then optionally, we can check to see if we returned back a status code of 200 or not. Now, also in Hurl, we can run HTTP tests. So we'll take a look at that in our examples. Now, if we take a look at our controller, I actually have four jobs already set up and they've already been run. I have an example one that's broken into two parts, a dash one and a dash two. Then we have an example two and an example three. There's a sample repository with all of this information. The link to that repository is down in the description. And let's go ahead and take a look at that repository. So what I have is these four Jenkins files that map to the four jobs on that controller. Let's go ahead and take a look at 1-1. What we're doing is we're first checking to see whether or not hurl is correctly installed. If it's not installed, then the job would fail. Next up, we're going to test a hurl file, basic-200 hurl. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. And then we're also going to do a test the 500. Now, both of these files are within the example one directory. So let's go over and take a look at that. Go back here to the top. We'll click on example one. And what we'll see is our basic 200. With that, we're doing a get of the Jenkins homepage, and then we're saying HTTP 200. So what's going to happen is it's going to do the get. And as long as the status code returned back is a 200, then the run of that hurl command is considered successful. Now in example one, I also have a basic 500. Again, we're doing a get, and in this case, we're expecting a 500. So if we don't get back a 500, then the run for hurl is going to exit with a status code of one, which in the case of Jenkins would cause that step to fail. So if we go back and take a look at our run for example 1-1, we can see that the overall job failed. If we take a look at the run of the job, what we're going to see is our hurl version, and that comes back with a hurl of 4.1.0. And then when we run hurl basic 200, what we see is the actual contents of that web page that we requested. So we'll scroll down to the bottom of this render. And once we're at the bottom, what we're going to see, we can see that we're moving on to our next stage, the test the 500 stage. But notice something different here. Instead of just saying hurl and the file name, I said dash dash no output. By including that option within the command line, that means everything that we saw rendered out for the 200 example doesn't show up. But what we see here is that the assert status code error pops up and it says here, okay, we're looking for 500, but the actual value was 200. So therefore this pipeline failed. Now let's go ahead and go back over to our example for example two. So if we go ahead and take a look at example one dash two, what we're doing again, we're gonna do the version to check. And then we're actually this time going to run dash dash test. And if we go back over into our example, what we're going to see for example 1-2 is that we have our output for hurl version. And then notice what happens when we run the dash dash test. The basic 200 is the same basic 200 that we saw in the 1-1. We now see the output of executed file of one and succeeded file of one with no failed files. And it actually gives us a duration of how long it took to run this test via hurl. Now let's go ahead and go back over to our repository and check out example two. So for example two, what we have is a different way to access data. In our first example, we were hard coding in the references to the Jenkins.io site. But what if I wanted to change that up and pass in a parameter or use an environment variable instead of actually hard coding all of our contents into the hurl file? Well, that's what we can do with the variable option. So what I have here, is I've got a basic 200 hurl file to take a look at. Let's go ahead and take a look at that before we go any further. In our basic 200 file, notice I have a get and then a host variable. I've just set it up as a variable name of host. And then I'm checking for HTTP 200. If we go back in and take a look at our example dash two, we can see that the host equals then test host. Well, the host that's on the left-hand side of the equal sign is the host variable that's within our hurl file. Notice that we're referencing test host. Well, test host in my case is referencing an environment variable that I'm passing in that's actually hard coded to the Jenkins site. So if we go ahead and go back over and take a look at our job, for example, two, when we take a look at the output, what we're going to see is hurl 
no output, and then the variable, and then we see host equals, and then we can see that the environment variable was actually loaded into that command line, which was then being passed into the basic 200 hurl file. And then finally, because we're passing in dash dash test, or we're just running test, we see we have one executed file that also succeeded and ran in about the same time as the first job. So now let's take a look at our final example. We'll go back over into our repository and take a look at Jenkins file example three. What we can see here is now we're gonna be running all of the tests. So we're gonna be putting together everything that we've been doing. In addition, one of the options that we can pass into hurl is to output the results of the tests in JUnit format. So we're gonna take advantage of that and show the results of the JUnit run back over inside of our controller. So what we're doing is hurl no output, we're passing in dash dash test, then we're setting the flag to put the report instead of a table like what we've seen in the previous examples, we're gonna put it out to JUnit format and we're giving it a file name of testresults.xml. Now also we have multiple files that we're gonna be running within each one of these files root, stories, plugins, contributors, and security, each one of these files has a different endpoint that is checking. So we can see plugins, we can see contributors, and we can see the security page. So once we go back into example three, all we're saying is a dash dash glob, and we're saying star dash hurl. And we're saying star dash hurl because we're already inside of the example three directory. Once we have run that, then we'll use the JUnit step to go ahead and publish those results back up to our controller so we can view them. So let's go take a look at example number three. So within example three, first off, we can already see that we have the results trend showing up in the right-hand corner. We did not see that for our other jobs. Let's go ahead and go into run number one. We'll scroll down and take a look at the example here. So hurl no output test report JUnit and then our glob. So we can see that 01 root ran, 02 stories ran, and so on. So this time with the test, we see that we had five executed files and five successful files. We can also see from the JUnit step that we are recording the test results. So if I go back up to the top here and take a look and click on test result, then what we're gonna see is the output for JUnit. If we click into root, then we're gonna see all five files that ran during the hurl test. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.